This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. For WRCE 107.7 FM News, I'm Joanne Krulotz. The body of a man was found after a search of a home by law enforcement in Prairie to Sheen Friday. Police said that they were called to do a welfare check on a man and found him dead at the home. A 39-year-old man was arrested. According to a release, the dead man had wounds from a sharp object. The investigation led to a search of a home in Grant County as well. Police said that the incident was, quote, not random, and the suspect and victim knew each other. U.S. Senator Ron Johnson appeared to hedge on Friday whether he or Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump would accept the outcome of the November election. Well, I sure hope so. You know, unfortunately, you know, here in the state of Wisconsin, uh, we have a governor who vetoed the types of bills that would restore confidence in our election system. So you're asking me a hypothetical question that I really can't answer because I don't know how many different ways Democrats are going to want to cheat. Despite a statewide inquiry in 2021, there has been no credible evidence of systematic voter fraud in the 2020 presidential election. Johnson, widely seen as a staunch ally of Trump, defended the former president's campaign and his proposals during an appearance on the Earl Ingram show Friday morning. You can listen to the full interview on the Earl Ingram show on the Civic Media website app, social platforms, or podcast apps. As the tax season approaches, the IRS is encouraging you to sign up for an identity protection personal identification number. Spokesperson Christopher Miller says it's an extra layer of security that helps prevent people from filing a tax return, using your name and social security number, and then stealing your refund. Miller says people should sign up for a PIN by November 23rd so they can get it in time for tax season. More information is available online at irs.gov. Community First Bank and four banker volunteers will be recognized by the Wisconsin Bankers Foundation's Excellence in Financial Education Award at the upcoming WBA Flex Retail and Marketing Summit in November. Certificates of recognition will be presented to Ann Cooley, Regional Branch Manager, Lancaster, Kimberly Rabska, Branch Manager, Baraboo, Sarah Paul, Branch Manager, Reedsburg, and Sherry Huza, Customer Service Representative in Platteville. Distributed annually by WBF, the Excellence in Financial Education Awards, recognize banks and individual bankers for their demonstrated commitment to improving financial literacy in their communities. Certificates of recognition recognize all individual bankers who reported between 5 and 19 presentations in a single year. A United States Department of Agriculture rule requiring newly applied cattle and bison official ID tags to have both a visual and electronic component will go into effect on November 5th. Currently, the only official tags that meet these requirements are 840 RFID tags. This requirement applies to official identification placed for any reason, including interstate movement, brucellosis vaccination, and tuberculosis testing. Cattle tagged with visual-only official tags prior to November 5th do not need to be re-tagged unless they lose their ID. These changes only apply to official ID for cattle and bison. The purpose of this rule is to improve livestock traceability. Electronic identification tags and systems provide many advantages over traditional metal tags, including faster information sharing, more accurate and precise identification of animals, and significantly faster record searches during disease outbreaks. With the election about a week away, Senator Tammy Baldwin and her Republican challenger, Eric Hovde, held campaign events in Eau Claire over the weekend. Senator Baldwin and Governor Tony Evers visited the city's IBEW local union to encourage canvassers and supporters to take advantage of early voting. Hovde visited Loopy's Bar and Grill in Chippewa Falls to urge his supporters to vote early as well. Both Senator Baldwin and Hovde have stressed the importance of voter turnout with a competitive election expected. With colder weather starting to settle into the area, heating experts are sharing tips with residents on how to winterize their homes properly. Experts say residents should begin with starting their heaters or furnaces now to reduce the risk of fire later. If they have a chimney in their home, they should get it checked for signs of deterioration, which could also cause a fire hazard. 
Experts also say it's a good time to check your smoke and carbon monoxide detectors to ensure they're working while checking your home for other heating-related fire dangers. The average gas prices in Wisconsin fell 6.7 cents during the last week. The average across the state is $2.87 per gallon. This is over 21 cents lower than a month ago and more than 31 cents lower than this time last year. Gas is at its lowest level since January, which some Americans attribute to the upcoming election. Officials at Gas Buddy say politicians have little influence over gasoline prices. The switch to winter gasoline and the drop in demand is pushing gas prices down. Officials say these drops will continue into and even beyond the election as colder weather arrives. The Biden administration wants to require private health insurers to cover all approved forms of birth control, even over-the-counter options. Planned Parenthood of Wisconsin President Tanya Atkinson says it's a step in the right direction and makes sure people can have complete coverage when some birth control options don't work. The rule would make a clear provision in the Affordable Care Act that requires contraception coverage by insurers. A number of plans have denied coverage of OTC medications, while others restrict access to just a few forms of birth control. It's unclear if the rule will be implemented by the time President Biden leaves office in January. You can support the troops with your excess candy, as obesity remains an ominous health threat across America, plaguing almost half of the U.S. population. The calorie-packed Halloween holiday looms large. However, there's no need to fret, as you can get paid cold hard cash for your candy. Healthy Wages Cash for Candy program pays individuals $10 per pound of candy, up to $100 per person, and up to $10,000 in collective payouts across America. Through the initiative, anyone can donate their excess unwanted and unopened candy to the Friends of the Troops nonprofit organization on or before November 15th, get paid for it, and in doing so, support American troops overseas. Participants need not be a Healthy Wage Challenge participant, as anyone anywhere in the U.S. can donate candy and cash in. Full submission details and instructions can be found online at healthywage.com slash cash the number four candy. VFW Post 2267 reminds students that the Patriots Pen and Voice of Democracy essays are due to the local VFW Post 2267 by October 31st. For WRCE News, I'm Joanne Krulotz. The Bucks lose in Boston. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports NBA. The Bucks losing to the Celtics 119 to 108. Milwaukee now 0 and 2 on this road trip. They've lost three in a row. Damian Lillard. It's definitely frustrating, you know, um, because when we do what we're supposed to do, you see what the first game looked like, and then in moments of the last two games, you see when we do it, what the game looks like. So it's definitely frustrating. Um, I just think it's one of those things right now where you gotta, you just gotta stay in the fight. The Bucks play in Memphis Thursday. College football. Badgers head coach Luke Fickle on reviewing the loss to Penn State over the weekend. You know it was tough, uh, but as you look back at it, you know the thing that it comes down to is execution and execution in the fourth quarter, and then making plays. The Badgers play the Hawkeyes in Iowa Saturday night. The NFL Network reporting an MRI showed no serious damage for Jordan Love and that groin injury. Could he play Sunday against the Lions? Yeah, if, if he can go, he'll go. So um, we'll see where he's at by the end of the week. And But if we feel like he can't protect himself, then we certainly wouldn't put him in that position. That's Matt LaFleur with Sports. I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Venom, The Last Dance, led the way at the U.S. box office last weekend, taking in $51 million, but it was still a bit of a disappointment. The final chapter of the Venom trilogy, starring Tom Hardy, was tracking to the tune of a much bigger showing at the box office. The studio was hoping it pulled in an additional $20 million bucks. Partial blame can go to the World Series, but not all of it, according to prognosticators. No reason to shed tears for Sony, as the film is performing well overseas. Coming in second was Smile 2, with just over $9 million, but a 60% drop-off after opening weekend, a little more than you'd like. The Wild Robot took in over $6 million in its fifth weekend in theaters. Outperforming Smile 2 and The Wild Robot on a per-screen average was newcomer Conclave, which received rave reviews and came in fourth place despite a limited release compared to other films. Rounding out the top five was the Andrew Garfield Florence Pugh-led romance We Live in Time, which was expanded to more theaters last weekend. Scary movie releases are winding down, folks. John Oliver's comedic takes on current events are top-notch. If you want a sample size and a good laugh, check out his and Will Ferrell 
Carroll's funny parody of Lee Greenwood's God Bless the USA. Oliver, an immigrant himself, had to take a test to become a citizen and then listen to Greenwood's song during his citizenship ceremony and thought new U.S. citizens deserved better. When he found out Greenwood charges the U.S. government $700 a year to use the song, it rubbed him the wrong way. So he is offering the new Will Ferrell version to the government for $701. Seems like a sensible price. Uma Thurman and Anthony Hopkins are teaming up with another up-and-coming actress, Phoebe Denever, for a forbidden love story called The Housekeeper. The film will be set in England at Hopkins' character's vast estate, with Thurman playing a housekeeper falling for a young woman and author who is visiting. It sounds quite steamy because Thurman and Denever are both very attractive, and even more so because there is no mention of Anthony Hopkins doing a love scene. Matthew Perry died over a year ago, but the story is still very much in the news. Variety reports that Perry's family is taking legal action against the doctors and those who supplied him with ketamine. Perry's mother and stepfather and three siblings appeared on the Today Show with Savannah Guthrie and discussed the pending 2025 trial against two of the parties that supplied the drugs to Perry. Charges were brought after a joint LAPD-DEA investigation into Perry's death. What could possibly be more fun than a Timothy Chalamet lookalike contest in New York City? How about Timothy Chalamet actually crashing the party? The actor showed up incognito at first to a sea of young men who looked similar and surprised everybody when he removed sunglasses and a mask, then posed for selfies with contestants. The contest was promoted by the use of flyers over the last few weeks. The winner was to receive a $50 prize. Seems kind of lame. In case you're wondering, the actual Timothy Chalamet took third place. For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Pichwaba, weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. It is going to be windy and warm today with near record high temperatures in the low 80s this afternoon. The wind will be out of the south gusting to between 30 and 40 at times. Tonight, 67. Tomorrow, falling temperatures with scattered rain and thunderstorms late tomorrow into tomorrow night. will drop into the upper 60s by late tomorrow afternoon. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Currently, it's 69. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 